All right, so I got my NAD receiver fired up. I've got the music queued up. I'm gonna be playing something from uh, Epidemic Sound. Um, I picked a track. It, uh, it sounds kind of interesting and it does have quite a bit of bass, which is something I wanted to test on these anyway. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and play that. I'm gonna switch off my lapel mic, turn on the, the camera mic, and uh, you know, if you have headphones, put your headphones on. Uh, if you got an AVR, home theater, whatever, you know, turn that up and kick back and enjoy. And then let me know what you think of these speakers in their stock form. Go ahead and put it in the comments below, okay? I'll even try to turn them up a little bit just to see what they're made of, right? Because I got other drivers anyway. So if I ruin these, it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Let's get going with the music test, the listening part. So I'm just sitting here trying to go through some different tracks and find something that's decent to listen to. Um, this is uh, kind of a mellow song. Kind of nice to hear a little bit of a mellow sound. I mean, they sound pretty good. Got a decent, you know, sound stage to them. Um, I think they sound probably bigger than they look when they're turned up. So you hear me. So it might not come across perfect on that end, but like, um, so when you hear me raising my voice, it's because that's kind of how loud it is in here. Um, so if I'm raising my voice a lot, it's because these are running really uh, loud. Okay. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and fire up another track and see what you think about that one. You know what? Honestly, though, I just realized my subwoofer is running because I was listening to these earlier in the day. So what you're hearing right now, it's actually with a subwoofer running. And my subwoofer, it's a, uh, it, it's a passive sub that's uh, got a 100 hertz crossover and its own amplifier. So I'm running it off the, you know, uh, the sub out on the receiver over to another amp uh, and into, the, uh, into a 12 inch sub and it runs under 100 it goes so it goes from about 100 to say 40 ish and then rolls off um so anyway that's that's what these sound like with a subwoofer i'm going to go ahead and turn this up a little bit and then i'll turn off the subwoofer and, so that you can see what the difference is kind of a fun sounding song uh, I don't think it has any lyrics just like this one didn't but um, anyway let me play this next track and then we'll be done with the listening portion of this
So that's enough of the listening. Now, on to the next thing. What's the next thing on the list? I'm peeking. I gotta grab it. What an amateur raw video this is. Ah, measure. Met, take a frequency measurement. See where we're at right now with this. You ready to do that? Okay, so I'm all set up for the frequency response test. The microphone, it's a Dayton OmniMic, and it's set up exactly 24 inches from the baffle. And it's hitting right about in here, right about in the middle of the cabinet, okay? So we're going to get kind of a good idea of the frequency response of this. Uh, I'm going to turn to my old buddy, Dr. Mix, on YouTube there to run that frequency sweep. Um, and let's see what it does. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this test and get out of the way so I'm not causing any kind of uh, interference here. So let's see what this guy does. Well, that's pretty amazing. I mean, that's a nice frequency response for a cheap speaker. Wow. That explains why they sound pretty decent. So what do you think? That's pretty cool, huh? MC1201. Yeah, a decent little measuring speaker. Um, yeah, it's every bit of in-room response from, oh, Looks like if we were going to pick this as our kind of datum, our baseline, this negative 70 line, it, uh, it basically reaches that at 79 hertz. So not bad. And that would explain why it works good with a subwoofer. But going across here, I mean, we are well within... Well, got here probably on the, on the very very worst part of it we're right around 300 hertz it's down by 5 db uh, where's the highest peak oh here's a peak there's a couple more peaks but even those those are like plus 4 db so this thing is i mean in all honesty, it's a plus minus 5 dB in-room response, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, from what I've measured in this room, yeah, that's a really good frequency response. So kudos to Realistic on that. I'm anxious to see kind of what's going on inside and get started with the, uh, the project itself. Um, I'll probably screw up this frequency response <laughs> for sure, but I think that the speakers will sound better. How is that possible? Well, frequency response isn't everything. Okay, let's show you what I have planned to go into these. All right, so I've got all my parts laid out here and I'm gonna kind of show you what I have going on. Um, so first things first, the woofers. I've got the Dayton Designer Series. This is a DS215-8 woofer. So I've got you know two of these, one for each speaker. The acoustic felt that I was talking about, it's right here. 
comes in sheets. It's an eighth inch thick. And this will actually fit perfectly in here. I just need to trim it down a little bit, but that's going to look really pretty nice. And it'll cut down on some of that uh, kind of noise coming off the tweeter and the higher frequencies from the woofer uh, right there on the front of the baffle. And this speaker does have like a recess, which is not the greatest for, you know, um, I guess off axis response. And it can even mess with the frequency response too. So, you know, it's, it's not the greatest uh, idea in the world to have this lip on here, and this will bring it out another eighth of an inch. Um, the grills will actually still fit in there. Um, they're back over there, but basically they snap in to the uh, sides. So that's that. Now, moving right along. Okay, terminal cups. Um, I just chose some uh, cheapo Parts Express five-way binding posts or gold-plated binding posts. Uh, yep, they've, they've got the, all the metal on there that causes all the audio files to freak out. But you know what? In this build, I'm not super concerned about it. At this level, uh, kind of a non-issue, I think. I mean, could I make it sound better with, you know, some different type of connector? Maybe. But for, for me, for right now, this will work fine. Uh, perfect for a resto mod. And then we've got crossovers. So these, uh, these are actually two-way crossovers that I buy from a seller on eBay. And I've used these before and I do like them. They cross over at 3,500 Hertz and it's a second order crossover. It's got some really thick air coil inductors. So not super thick, but you know, thick for what these speakers are. Uh, it's got a poly cap for the high pass. Uh, it's got electrolytic cap for the low pass. Um, all in all, you know, not a bad design and it fits in small speakers. And like I say, I've used it in the past and it does work good. The only downside to it is you do need to solder your own wires to it. It's got these, you know, through holes that you put the wires in. So what I typically use for that is uh, the Audtech uh 99.999% oxygen free, uh, 14.2, uh, that comes from parts express. Uh, this is actually twisted, which is pretty good. Um, and it's really thick. So I've got just enough here that I can go and jump from the terminal cup to the crossover. Then to feed the speakers, the drivers, what I've got is, uh, this is Honeywell. Uh, 16 gauge and this is a four wire cable so I'll use the black and the red for the woofer and the green and the white for the tweeter and solder these guys I've got just enough for both cabinets so I'll solder these onto there uh, the oh I forgot to talk about tweeters the tweeters I want to use in this project um, are a set of uh, peerless one inch uh, textile dome tweeters and they're pretty nice and compact. And I'm hoping that they fit right in that hole. At least that's the plan. We'll see. Then, let's see. Oh, uh, just in case I pulled out base reflex ports, just in case. Because, you know, if I do the math, I'm going to run this through a couple different ways. I'm going to look at uh, the Parts Express website at their recommendations for boxes for these woofers. Uh, and I'm going to measure these cabinets just to make sure what the internal uh, volume is. And, you know, I'd like to stick with the seal design, but if this woofer works better in a ported design, then I do have the ports. I have a two inch precision port uh, flared port kit. And then I've also got a couple of these uh, stray, uh, these were actually from an older uh, Jensen speaker that I had. These are one and three quarter inch by one inch uh, ports. So. I do have some port options and then also I'm going to be putting sound deadening in here. This is the Silas uh, foil backed butyl sound deadener and it does reduce uh, sound emission through the MDF as well as cutting down on vibration which means that it can cancel out resonance in this cabinet and I've tested it and it works. So I put this in all my speakers now. Uh, I'm sure other brands and stuff work good too, but 
This one here I like because it comes in a little box with these pre-cut pieces. So like I know from the last set that I did that was same cabinet size, took almost a whole box to do both speakers. And, you know, it's really nice, already pre-cut sizes that fit in there good. So, you know, anyway, so there's my parts. Now, let's see if they're going to actually fit inside the cabinets. <laughs> 